Can you all hear me? Good morning. Yes. Morning. Yes. Yeah. Good, good. Hi, uh, good morning, good evening, and good day, friends. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the IFLA Academic and Research Library Section Standing Committee's webinar series. Um, my name is Xin Li. I am your moderator today, and I'm a member on this committee. It is my great pleasure to introduce 10 of my colleagues who are also on this committee to um, present to you to share their experience from various regions about how academic library provide uh, uh, services during COVID-19. And um, I just wanted uh, to, I need to advance the slide, hold on. Okay, so um, there are 10 of us and we will start from Australia and moving west and as you can see, we cover quite a geographic span and we will end with a speaker from uh, US libraries. Because we have 10 speakers and we only have one and a half hours, the time is very tight. So I'm not going to, as usual, uh, you know, traditionally read everybody's title, their uh, name and their library and so on. What we will do is we ask you to visit our committee's website where all of of the committee uh, members, including the speaker's information, it can be found at this link uh, below. And um, also, each speaker will have a title slide. On it will have their name and institution and the region. And each speaker will present about 10 minutes so that we can uh, move on. And what we would like to do is to ask you, please, hold your questions to the end so that we can make sure you get to listen to all 10 presentations. And then we will try to reserve as much time as possible because we are looking forward to learning from you as well. So some very quick uh, housekeeping. Um, this event is being recorded and we will try to pr uh, put the, the recording on this uh, link as shown on the website as soon as possible. And your microphones have been muted so that we can hear the speakers. But if you have questions, if you don't want to wait to the end, you can type in the chat box. And my colleague, uh, Reggie, is uh, monitoring the chat. And if you also have issues listening uh, or accessing, please do uh, type in the chat and maybe uh, Reggie can help you. So without further ado, I'm going to move to Goshen. And as our first speaker, Goshen is also the chair of our committee. Over to you. Greetings, everybody. Greetings from the East Coast of Australia. Before I begin, I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of this land, the First Nations of Australia. So welcome to IFLA Academic and Research Libraries webinar on academic library services during the COVID-19 pandemic. As the chair of IFLA Academic and Research Libraries section, I'm delighted to welcome all our speakers and all our participants. I see oh, that so, sorry, very Goshen, well. can, can I ask you, can we ask you to, uh, uh, to upload the slides? Yes, please, the first slide. Shin, would you upload the slide, please? Sorry, Gulshan, I apologize. Shin, you have not uploaded the presentation. Please share the screen. Uh, you are on mute. Let me try to share again. Sorry about that. I thought the slide was shared. Hold on. Okay, we, we, we now. See, yeah, that's good. We have it now. Do you see it can now? Can we go to the previous one, the in, initial slide? Yeah. Perfect. It's perfect now. Well, it yes. perfect? It's just in okay. design view. Yeah, you could move it into slideshow. Perfect. Okay, yes. great. There we go. Is this the slide you want? 
Yes, next test slide. Next slide. Uh, no, uh, Gaoshan, you will tell me yeah. when to advance. Yeah. Sorry about that, so, audience. So I think I think you've already heard my very brief introduction, and I just want to say that IFLA Academic and Research Library section has members from all over the world. We are truly global. And we, you can see from the speakers tonight, we are all over the world, from the east to the west. And uh, we have people from Denmark, USA, France, and so on. But I'd like to, first of all, acknowledge our colleagues, Reggie Raju from University of Cape Town in South Africa, and Jin Lee from Cornell University in the US for the amazing amount of work they have done to put this webinar together. And thank you to all the speakers for their uh, presentations. I'm really looking forward to that. For those of you who want to know more about IFLA ARL, the website is at the bottom of my first slide. We have a wonderful website with lots of information. There's a blog, monthly blog, uh, webinars, as you see, they have a social media presence. Our Facebook is very active. And I'd like to also just um, highlight that in a month or so, we will have another webinar, a follow-up to COVID, which is actually a web version of our hot topic session, which we were supposed to do face-to-face -face in August in Dublin. And due to the cancellation of the IFLA conference, we're going to do it um, uh, virtually in, in late August or September, coordinated by Lorraine from Texas. Can I have the next slide, please? Okay, so um, I am chair of IFLA ARL, but I was a university librarian at Singapore Management University until recently. And I've also been a university librarian in Australia and Turkey previously. So I've been able to tap onto my wonderful colleagues in both Singapore and Australia and collect their experiences and reflections, which I will share very briefly with you today. I left Singapore on the 14th of March, and we had already started dealing with the whole COVID pandemic issue since end of January. And as you know, Singapore is a very well organized country where uh, a lot of the measures had been put in place long before many other countries in other places did. I'll give you one example. We had split teams, Zoom and MS Teams meetings, working from home, controlled entries, all the way from the beginning of February. The other thing that's really interesting about Singapore is that every staff member at SMU where I work is given a thermometer as part of their orientation package. So we all have our own thermometers. And the first thing we had to do from the beginning of February was we had to report our temperatures twice a day, wherever we were, so that that was a very good um, uh, follow up. And of course, Singapore has the experience with SARS. SARS, that's why they're so well organized. So today I'm going to mention a few of the experiences from Singapore, uh, thanks to National University of Singapore, NUS, NTU, Nanyang Technological University, and SMU, of course, Mrs. Lee Chang Yan. Uh, Caroline Pang and Bethany Wilkes, who is my successor, has given me a lot of information. Um, and then I'm going to base some of the information about Australia from COLE, Council of Australian University Libraries, and they have done a lot of work in terms of collaboration in Australia and New Zealand. And I'd like to thank Mark Sutherland from COLE, who helped me put this information together. Next slide, please. Next slide. Okay, so um, because of uh, timing, I'm just going to do a very quick summary. Um, the general observations from these libraries in Singapore and Australia is that my colleagues said, we never closed our libraries. And we have been preparing for this for at least 10 to 20 years. Admittedly, it was a shock. Nobody expected that we would confront, be confronted with a crisis like this. But libraries have been moving, pivoting 
from physical to the digital for a long, long time. And it's like even late 90s, I remember. And for most libraries in Australia and uh, New Zealand and Singapore, uh, we have very good infrastructure, very good technology support. And we've been using Zoom, MS Teams, WebEx, all sorts of things right from the beginning. So they pivoted from physical to digital very quickly. Admittedly, uh, some people felt a little bit unsure initially, but I was just listening to some things from uh, Australian libraries today. They seem to be adapting quite well. And the other thing we must remember is that there's an abundance of open access resources out there. Again, libraries have been building these wonderful open access repositories, and there's a lot of open access out there, and we really very much involved in that. So we have been able to make the most of these open access resources. Obviously in North America, they have Hattie Trust, which we don't have in Singapore or Australia. But um, the other thing that's really interesting is that librarians have always been very good at collaboration. You know, we're very collaborative profession. So we collaborate with each other within our libraries. We collaborate with uh, faculty, other departments in our universities, but also other libraries, vendors and publishers. And we've seen some wonderful examples of working with publishers to make a lot of things open access during this crisis. So this has been a very uh, good experience in a way, in spite of the crisis and the risks and so on. Let me move on to my next slide. Next slide, please. Next slide, okay, next one, this one, yes. So I'm going to give you some examples of outcomes uh, from COAL, Council of Australian University Librarians. COAL recently conducted a survey of member libraries and their planning and approaches to reopening of their physical libraries. As you can see from the results of this survey, Libraries, 44% of the libraries said they were never fu fully closed. And, uh, and the rest of the figures are there for you to see. In many libraries, they were physically open, but controlled entrances and very high level of um, hygiene measures were in place. Staff were working from home, conducting their work, but physically a lot of them were open. The next question they asked was, what do you see as the major challenges to reopening of the libraries successfully? As you can see, 75% of them said, concern about safety of staff and students was of course, utmost concern. So I'm hearing the same thing from all of my colleagues. And again, um, you know, th that has been the bi biggest risk actually. Next slide, please. Um, practically, a phased or rostered approach was preferred amongst members of call for managing the return to work. So the question that said over the next three to six months, which of the following do you expect to be your greatest priorities is we can see advocacy within your own institution about changing um, and the potential role of the library. And this actually has provided a good opportunity for a lot of libraries to showcase their value, how they're adding value to their uh, universities. Um, the next question, what measures are being carried out to operate safely when open? As you can see, things like rearranging of floor plans, disinfecting surfaces, providing hand washing and hand sanitizers, adjusting staff locations. So gradually some libraries are bringing staff back, but they're also giving choices to the, to the staff saying, if you prefer to work from home, continue to do so, because uh, as, as I said before, the safety of the staff is, is of utmost importance. Um, especially mental well-being of the staff is very, very important. And in fact, a lot of the libraries have been doing some really interesting things to make sure people are connected, their mental well-being is taken care of, 
and um, and there's a lot of connection touch points and so on it's really quite interesting one live they said they even did a it attended a colleague's wedding by Zoom, you know, it's sort of lovely things. Next slide, please. Next slide. Okay, so uh, Australian libraries came up with uh, a document with, uh, with, with tips for reopening of the libraries. They all agreed that leading a robust uh, post-COVID review um, in preparation for the institution's process was very, very important. Obviously, a lot of universities are also doing this, they're going to do that, but it was very important that library was involved in contributing to the review process to, to, to share what the learnings were, what the reflections were. And um, so it's very good to see that librarians are collecting uh, feedback, suggestions, thoughts, and, and reflections. I have seen some very interesting surveys done of staff, not just once, over and over, to make sure that staff are able to contribute uh, their thoughts about what, what their reflections were, what, they could, have, what could have happened. Um, one of the things that I've heard people say was that during this crisis, hierarchy was no longer important. Democracy was really in place and people were able to contribute equally to the planning, to the organization, to getting things done. And, and everybody was on the same board saying that, well, what's what really important is minimizing the risk and maximizing the access. Next slide, please. Next slide. No, not yet. I've got three more slides. Next one. No. Next one. Sorry, I think there's a this slide is missing. Well, it's all maybe, have. maybe you can uh, talk about it without. I okay, don't I will, yes. So Sorry. what I was going to say next was, um, some libraries in, in both Singapore and Australia have also said that they are assuming new roles during the pandemic. For example, University of Queensland took on the responsibility for uh, providing technical support for online examinations, which is uh, because that's what, what they agreed to do. Um, and in University of Southern Queensland, because the library had uh, makerspace and 3D printers, they collaborated with other departments to create, uh, to manufacture a whole lot of face shields for the health workers. Um, in SMU library, uh, some of our library staff were involved in helping with contact tracing. Uh, University of South Australia, they have a lot of students in China and the students in China were stranded. They couldn't come to Australia. So they initiated a bilingual chat session for Chinese students to help them to transition. University of Newcastle, they kept open uh, and they also had uh, Zoom rooms to do live virtual desk services. Um, and all the libraries uh, expanded or enhanced their chat services, chat reference inquiries and research consultations. And my own library in Singapore, um, the, the, the usage of the chat service went through the roof and they uh, expanded the hours to weekends and, uh, and night. And it was really wonderful to see that. So my final slide, which you can't see, and I will just summarize is that um, it's reflections. Reflections, reflections and the good and the not so good. Um, there has been a lot of opportunities as well as challenges for libraries. Um, somebody said not long ago, most libraries have not wasted this crisis, made the most of it to demonstrate their agility their pivoting skills and de digital dexterity because we've been preparing for it for a long, long time. They have learned a lot and they will continue evolving uh, at an even greater speed, but with resilience, empathy, uh, teamwork, agility, 
and uh, more than anything is valuable members of their communities. Uh, people stepped up to the challenge and pivoted to a digital environment. So I am very, very hopeful that this crisis, even though it's very uh, unfortunate, will actually enhance the value that libraries add to their institution. So thank you very much, and I will finish here. Thank you, Gaussian. Uh, for the speakers, there is perhaps a delay when you say to me, uh, next slide, so it takes a little while. Let me move on to the next speaker. And I think you've gotten muted again. We can't hear you. Will you please go back? No. Yes. Yeah. This one. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. So I'm trying to manage the waiting room and the advanced. <laughs> so sorry about this. So our next speaker is. I'll manage the waiting room. It's fine. Okay. Good, Reggie. Thank you. So our next speaker, thank you, Goshen, and uh, Leo is from Hong Kong. Take it away. Should I start now? Yes, please. Okay, uh, well, uh, everybody, um, good um, evening here in Hong Kong. Uh, good day and good morning elsewhere. Um, uh, I, and I'm very, you know, I'm very pleased to, to you know, here to share our experience, um, you know, about our library services in CHK especially during uh, COVID-19. Naturally, Guqin has a wonderful, you know, sharing and presentation from a national perspective, and mine will be an institu institutional perspective. Next slide, nice, please. Next slide, nice, please. Yes, thank you. Now, uh, this slide uh, gives you, you know, some idea about CHK, uh, which was established in 1963, uh, a, a comprehensive uh, research university. Uh, we have, you know, altogether uh, nine colleges, you know, comprising 17,000 undergraduate as well as, you know, 3.6,000 postgraduates. And next slide, please. And uh, as I said, I mean, CHK, um, you know, uh, library consists uh, of, I mean, uh, uh, because we are having a, uh, having a college systems, so CHK library consists of, you know, altogether seven libraries, uh, you know, including what we call the university library, that is the main library, and three college libraries, and as well as three professional libraries. And in terms of campus, we, you know, kind of divide our campus uh, as uh, upper campus, central campus, as well as lower campus. We have a medical library, you know, uh, 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 away from the main campus in a uh, hospital. Next slide, please. Now, in terms of collection, uh, CHP library has, uh, you know, more than 2.8 uh, million, uh, you know, uh, print books, and, and as well as, uh, uh, 4.8 million e-books and for journals we have you know uh, 156,000 e-journals as uh, 3.7 thousand uh, print journals um, because of time I'm not able to you know give you further details about CHK library uh, but of course you are most welcome to visit our website and you can find a lot more you know about our library next slide please well, uh, I have been a bit hesitant in putting up this slide because I understand, you know, you know any real-time figures like this will get outdated as soon as it is uh, captured. Anyway, uh, this, you know, screen dump suffices to show that CH, uh, COVID-19 uh, infection rate in Hong Kong is probably among, you know, one of the lowest figures around the world. You know, according to the figures that I captured last Friday, um, by, the, by the time when I submit PPT, uh, infection rate is 0 0.023%, uh, which I believe is uh, one of the lowest figures around uh, the world. Next slide, please. Now, in this and the next slide, I'm going to kind of, you know, share with you a timeline uh, of COVID-19 in Hong Kong. 
as well as you know the response from CHK um, uh, during this period. But again, uh, I'm not going, and it is impossible for me to go through each and every details. So I just want to pick up you know some major days, uh, especially on you know the uh, first imported case of uh, COVID-19 in Hong Kong on uh, January 23rd. Uh, by that time, Hong Kong government raised the response level to the emergency level on 25th of January. And uh, soon after that, um, CHK uh, organized uh, you know, workshops between uh, January 30 to February 14, uh, in, you know, in the light of assisting the teachers, students, and staff to get familiar with the online teaching facilities. So uh, CHK has been responding uh, to this, you know, uh, uh, incident uh, pretty fast, and uh, and after reporting the first coronavirus death and the first local case of COVID infection uh, in Hong Kong on February fourth, and Hong Kong government uh, implemented a series of precautionary measures, including you know most of the passengers' clearance services substandard, social distancing uh, measure, etc. And again, CHK then decide to provide online teaching instead of face-to-face -face teaching uh, with effect from February 17th. Uh, with uh, all these precautionary measures in place, uh, COVID-19 spreading uh, has, was under control by the end of April. Next slide, please. Hong Kong government then relaxed the precautionary health measures to allow gr group gatherings, and at the same time, CHK start to resume normal operation on May 4th. But it's really unfortunate that uh, in Hong Kong, uh, we have recently uh, having an increasing number of infection cases in early July, and Hong Kong government has tightened up the precautionary measure again since uh, July 15th. And uh, as a, I mean, in, in our library, we can only provide very uh, limited library services, again, start uh, from yesterday. Um, again, because of time, this two slides just you know, highlight some of the major days during COVID-19 in Hong Kong. A lot more can be found on the webpage of Hong Kong government as well as CHK. Next slide, please. Now, this slide shows you the timeline of response of CHK library since January. Um, we have been taking you know, various actions in accordance with the precautionary health measures of CHK for in fighting COVID-19. And I'm not going to go into every details of, team, uh, of this timeline. What I want to point out is that the major concern in formulating these measures, you know, whether or not very limited services, you know, um, you know uh, close down of the library, uh, is uh, to make sure that we can support and, uh, the faculty teaching and student learning in the best way, in the most flexible way during uh, COVID-19 period. Uh, uh, as you can see, we sometimes have no choice but to close down the library, but in any time, we can provide very limited services. Next slide, please. Well, no doubt, you know, that, uh, supporting, you know, t remote teaching and student learning is the most important library services uh, when the library is closed down. We have created a web page for, you know, students so that uh, they can find all library uh, services, resources that they can use during a uh, you know, COVID-19 period in one place. Next slide, please. Uh, health and being of, uh, health and well-being of staff and students is always the top priority when we resume library services in May. We have implemented a whole list of you know, measures, uh, you know, like you know, uh, users are required to wear masks uh, before entering into the library. Seating is you know, strategically arranged to maintain social distancing. Um, you know, group gathering at table, et cetera. And we also provide hand sanitizer at service counters and also use book sterilizer to handle return books. Next slide, please. You know, apart from providing full range of resources, we also make special provisions to ensure access to our collections. Uh, we have a very rich of new uh, collections, but at the same time, we provide access to print collections like print to e e-copy services, acquisitions of e-copy for course reserve book, and we have you know, special funding for the digital course reserve. 
And, and, and one of the most you know, welcoming uh, uh, services, the book retrieval services uh, with self-checkout uh, during the library closure period. And we also provide remote access to other resources, media resources, uh, uh, what we call the local TV programs, VLVPN. Next slide, please. Um, we have to exercise you know, flexibility in extending the library services, uh, like the borrowing privilege of physical items. Uh, the due date will be automatically extended to uh, the end of September. All loans of CHK items will be automatically renewed uh, until the maximum period. And all fines in cure from January to August will be waived. Uh, we also roll out a new brand new service soon with a librarian. The user can talk can text, can write, can, and also screen sharing, file transferring with the library uh, through Zoom. And we also wrote out, you know, student notebook, notebook system and mounting digital exhibitions, etc. And all in all, finally, uh, uh, what I want to say, it may be too early to predict uh, when COVID-19 will be away. No doubt we have a lot to learn uh, to continue our business uh, under the new normal by exploring you know, all possibilities, all flexibilities in order to better serve our users in this very challenging period. So this is the end, my end of my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Leo. So our next speaker is from Denmark. Unfortunately, Berto cannot attend today's um, presentation due to a scheduling conflict, but he sent a pre-recorded uh, uh, presentation, which he has given very recently at Libra 2020. I am going to play this recording. It's about 10 minutes. I will also turn on the uh, closed caption when I have. Can you all hear? Shin, we can't hear the sound. I cannot hear. No, no we can't can hear. We cannot hear yet. Okay. Uh, Sean. Um, just make sure, uh, double check that you checked to share computer, computer audio. But... Where do I go now? So you, you can um, start a new share and then make sure that that box is checked. Okay, hold on. Excuse me, the audience, let me go back to see. I should exit the share screen, is that what I do? Yeah, you can, you can do it that way, exit it, start it over. <sighs> so when I do, I do a stop sharing, forgive me audience, let me try because this is my very first time trying to share someone's Recording. Do you see the screen, Sean? Yeah, so so just hit uh, F5, or actually Shift F5. I do Shift F5. And this is what I see, which is the same as, um, as yesterday. So I don't have that option to share if I hit play. Can you hear now? No. No. Uh, Looks like it should work though. You, you have the audio option there. Yeah. We have been having, 
You still cannot hear? No. Um, is in, there in, any... In, in the interest of time, let's move on yeah. to the next presentation. We can always come back. We can, we can also post the video on the on on the website along with the uh, video of this uh, of this presentation. Okay, that sounds good because we have been having audio uh, problems yesterday, and I thought our IT helped me to fix. Maybe this has to do with the browser. So for uh, the it, it looks like the the issue we fixed is fixed. So this is something else. Um, okay. Thank you, Sean. So yeah. uh, what we will do then, audience, what we will do is we're going to move to the next uh, present, uh, presentation and we will post this one along with our uh, recording on the website for you to review. And I'm very sorry about this uh, particular case. So I am going to move on to the next person then. Good. Now it does not let me move. You can hit the the gray advance mm -hmm. button in the lower right or lower left. Lower left. I see. All right. So Jerome, are you ready? Yep. Hi, okay. Jerome. Great. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening or good night, depending on your place and home. So next slide, please. Just a few facts and figures to get you a feel of what the French National Library is. We act both as a traditional national library in the sense that we get the legal deposit, for instance, but we are also a public and a research library, and we also have a mission to cooperate nationally and internationally. Uh, this is an old lady because we were founded in the 14th century, uh, and we have a number of locations, which means uh, over 30 reading rooms, and this gives you an idea of uh, the kind of logistics that can be uh, uh, at stake in such an institution. Next slide. To uh, give you an outline of the situation in France and of the uh, pandemic situation, uh, we uh, closed down the country uh, in, in, in March. Uh, this is quite a severe uh, close, down, uh, close down in the shutdown in the sense that, for instance, you couldn't move more than one kilometer from your home. You had a heavy uh, police surveillance and a hefty fines if you uh, didn't show a, a document ju justifying your, uh, your work, basically. And then gradually, uh, we uh, reopened uh, across the, the month of May and June. Uh, gradually, because depending on the uh, regions, uh, you were in a, in a red, uh, so-called red or, or green region with different rules. But in the uh, beginning of July, we were uh, able at the institution to reopen at least partially, uh, first the uh, research li library, and of course, a couple of uh, services could not be uh, uh, accessible. And uh, mid-July, we are able to fully, uh, to fully open access except some, uh, some uh, services like uh, events. The toll in France is something like 30,000 deaths, which is uh, big by uh, European standards. And the situation is a bit paradoxical now because whereas we uh, uh, open at large and uh, actually uh, this very day, we will uh, restore full capacity in our reading rooms. There is a new surge in cases uh, with COVID-19 and so a lot of uncertainty. Next slide. So during the full uh, shutdown of our services, uh, it's obviously some uh, services were still available and I just wanted to remind that uh, this is the uh, uh, cooperation and national angle of the institution, if you will. So of course, the websites, the online catalogs, the digital library, for instance, which is called uh, Gallica here, and also some more specialized services. I would just mention, for instance, Retro News, which is a, a kind of dedicated uh, digital library uh, of journals for uh, press professionals, for instance. Next slide. <laughs> Uh, still, we uh, felt the need to uh, try and provide some more uh, services. 
uh, even though the, 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 the services I just mentioned were working and were quite successful. And essentially, uh, we went through a couple of uh, ideas. Number one, like a number, I guess, of uh, academic libraries, we tried to negotiate with the publishers some enhanced services, which meant for us either uh, to get the resources accessible remotely when they were accessible only uh, on sites, uh, to get them uh, free when they were uh, for, for paid for use, and also uh, internally we made the policy of the library more flexible uh, so that for instance the general public could get the same access of the, as the academics within the library. Uh, we had the, also this tradition of uh, having face-to-face -face meeting for researchers, researchers and we put that online. Uh, a big uh, novelty in this institution was to provide some um, e-copies of works that we hold, which is very untypical for a national library. And then we did some, uh, um, some uh, uh, content uh, edition in the forms, for instance, of uh, video conferences uh, on our collections uh, that we call BNF in your living room. And we added uh, a lot of additional con content on our uh, website and uh, social media uh, tools. Next slide. So I would like now just to focus a little bit more of, on, on the issues and questions we went through either number one on, at the uh, global institution level or number two uh, on, on, in my own uh, department uh, which uh, deals with uh, music heritage collections. Uh, first of all, at the BNF level, uh, given the time we had, uh, and despite the big resources we have, we used existing channels and, uh, 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 and infrastructure to get new services. For instance, there is an app which is called Affluence, uh, which is used to check uh, what the traffic is in the meeting room. And this is the one we used uh, to organize the uh, online appointments with the researchers. Uh, another example, there is uh, an Ask Librarian service, which is called Simbad, which is uh, an acronym. And we use that kind of channel to send the copies to the uh, uh, people that requested it. And social media emails with the CRM uh, were used to uh, get these services known. Obviously, we met some uh, commercial uh, issues or legal issues, commercial, the offer that we uh, painfully uh, negotiated with the publishers may not uh, last long. So this was something, uh, this is something we will have to work uh, again in the future. Uh, and of course, we were not able to uh, digitize on demand all the documents, for instance, the uh, unpublished archives are not eligible to the uh, uh, e-copies system we put in place. Like any other uh, library institution, we met a, a number of uh, organizational uh, issues internally. Uh, this time, uh, type of adaptation needs a lot of training. And for instance, we run uh, something like 30 internal webinars accessible to all the uh, personnel to get uh, people uh, ready. We learned some lessons because some services uh, were uh, pretty welcomed uh, and some uh, other uh, not and uh, we don't know what the situation will be in the near future. Next slide. We declined, uh, or we uh, adapted this type of approach to, our, uh, to my own department, for instance, creating uh, some methodology uh, called tools uh, for researchers or uh, doing some videos on our heritage collections. You have here uh, an example on a Haydn uh, a symphony. Uh, we also discovered that this was a good opportunity to try and, and work across various uh, teams to enrich the catalog uh, while you were uh, working uh, uh, from home. Uh, and so the lessons are that there is a, finally a lot to do when you're not at, at the office, that there are services that we uh, thought would be quite uh, re requested and that it was not the case, for instance, the copies. And we discovered that, that we are reopening that the readers are more than happy to be back. Next, and I think last slide, a couple of lessons. Uh, 
we, we don't know where we are heading for, uh, clearly. Uh, we are still negotiating with our providers. Uh, there are some trends that we discovered when the uh, services uh, came uh, through a, a peak of usage, but we don't know if this will be uh, sustainable. And as now the uh, uh, reading rooms are almost full again, we discover that for heritage collections and for research libraries such as we are, the balance uh, between physical and digital, between, between on place and, and from home, uh, is still something uh, that uh, entails a lot of uh, mystery uh, for us. Thanks, and the last slide is a couple of resources that you could use if you wish. Thank you, Jerome. So we're moving on to Ursula from Germany. Yes, hello everybody. My name is Ursula Arning from ZB Med, Information Center for Life Sciences. And I'm the head of the Open Science Department. It means research data, long-term preservation, and open access. Um, the next slide, please. Um, it's where the German National Library of Medicine, Healthcare, Nutritional, Environmental, and Agricultural Sciences. And we are the service center for research in the life sciences. It means advice, advisory services, um, publication services, research support, and application-oriented research. And we have the publication portal Publiso and the discovery service Divivo. The next one, please. In this short presentation, I will give you an overview how we act and react to the restrictions we had to face because of COVID-19. The next one. COVID-19 was and still is a challenge for our researchers and the whole library staff. So here you will have our researchers and obviously our library staff was very important in this time. The next one, please. As the needs for accessing our holdings have not ceased with COVID-19, we did not fall in state of shock. The next one. The library's lockdown was on the 16th of March, but from the first day on, we made great efforts to accomplish our role as the biggest supplier of information and document deliverer in the life sciences. And guess what? Though the volume increased. Because of the circumstances, we allowed our on-site users to place interlibrary loans for articles we have in stock. The articles were sent in PDF format. Our document delivery service via Subito was highly asked nationally and internationally. Then, yeah. We reopened the loan department of the library on the 4th of May, thinking may the force be with us, fulfilling all required hygiene standards. Many of our colleagues used the time working in home office to improve the data quality of two well-known German journal reference systems. The next one, please. And we have crea created a COVID-19 hub to support researchers and interested individuals by providing tools and data sets related to the coronavirus virus disease outbreak. The next one, please. Furthermore, that we made list freely available scientific papers. One more touch, please. As well as other reliable internet sources about the coronavirus, SARS-CoV-2, and the disease COVID-19 in a systematic way. From our discovery service, Livivo, um, no one back, please. Yeah, <laughs> perfect. From our discovery service, Libido, we extracted COVID-19 literature in a separate collection. Researchers can publish the data on SARS-CoV-2, COVID-19 on our platforms, for example, German Medical Science or our repository, to support further research. Feel free to have a look on our website with this link you are provided there. The next one, please. Well, this is an example of our collection and you can search by type. You have the databases, data collections, 
or preprints, st statistics and maps, training materials, or you can search by themes like medicine, life sciences, public health, social life, like legal acts, politics, or social impact. The next one, please. And very new is our preprint viewer. Um, that said, we made preprint viewer, it's named preview, includes all COVID-19 related preprints from Met Archive and Bio Archive, from Chem Archive, from Archive and from Preprints.org, and it's uploaded on a daily basis. It is developed by the task force COVID-19, and this is a member of uh, NFDI for Health, the data, uh, National Data Research Infrastructure of Germany. The next one, please. And we are very proud of ZBMED's COVID-19 hub that it's mentioned in databases and websites all over the world. So you have it in the University of Arizona, the University of Turku, and uh, the next slide, please. Uh, and also on the University of Vienna and other institutions. The next one, please. Well, and this, um, the Robert Koch Institute is the one which provides Germany with the latest information about the infection rate. So all the evenings we have followed the new data and hope that there will not be more increasing and more infections. The next one, please. To summarize, we have learned some lessons which we wanted to share with you. Thanks, thanks to the dedication of the document delivery staff, we have been able to maintain the document delivery service and overcome the limitations that other libraries had due to the lockdown. The exception of direct delivery to the customers of interlibrary loan articles were been very good and very appreciated. This was possible by liberating legal rules by the Fauge Board, the Copyright Collecting Society of Germany. A successively reopening of the library protects users and staff. So it was a very good experience that the whole staff worked hand in hand across the boundaries of the program departments and the cross-sectional areas. Together we feel we are absolutely crisis proof and we can achieve more than we think. The next one, please. So what actions were especially important for coordinating services during the outbreak? We could keep our document delivery service thanks to the commitment and the on-site presence of staff members of this department. We assess the situation in regular meetings and they allow us prudent crisis management. Using online tools, we were able to reach even more people than we would have reached by conventional means. For example, the conference Future of Scientific Libraries was planned as a conference on-site. With almost 300 participants, we reach more participants than we would have reached offline. So, thank you very much for your attention, and I'm waiting after that for the, your questions. Thank you, Ursula. So, next uh, we are moving to India. Ramesh, are you ready? Yes. Thank Go you, ahead. Jane, uh, Raggy, for wonderful uh, opportunity to share my experiences and views on this very important topic. Uh, currently uh, in India, we are in a state of uh, crisis in terms of COVID-19. About uh, 1.19 million cases have been reported, but at the same time we have a very good recovery rate. Uh, 753,000 people have already been recovered and about we have about 446,000 active cases. And in terms of the death reported, we have about 28,672 uh, deaths, which uh, we can say that as per the uh, world standard, uh, we have minimum uh, death uh, rates in, uh, in, in case of COVID infection. But uh, if you talk about uh, overall uh, situation, uh, the entire country has been uh, divided into uh, three important zones. Uh, I will talk about that later because uh, now uh, Zen has changed the slide and uh, this is about the organization where I'm working that is Indira Gandhi National Center for the Arts. It is a premier institute uh, in, 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 in terms of uh, Indian cultural heritage and uh, it's a very traditional institute. Uh, we have uh, various kind of programs and uh, 
fairs, festivals, exhibitions, seminar, conferences, uh, besides having a very large repository of cultural heritage materials. So when this uh, situation of closed down, when uh, offices were closed, library institutions are closed, uh, how to cope up with this kind of situation? Uh, being a traditional organization, uh, prior to that, we have all physical in-person programs. So now we decided to take up this uh, uh, situation and we, we discuss and we, we try to find out solutions. So what we have done, we have converted our all entire programs like seminar into webinar, uh, online lectures, and also we used to organize book discussion, which has been converted into virtual book discussions. We used to organize number of exhibitions. Now we have converted those exhibitions in, in form of virtual exhibition. And all, almost all the events which used to organize in person, uh, we have converted into online mode. So that's a, something uh, very, very interesting uh, outcome of these events. Uh, then, uh, the screen has been uh, disappeared. Can you reshare it? Shin? Yeah. Okay. So thank you. Thank you. So uh, the very interesting observations in terms of uh, the, the, the people, like we used to organize the in-person events. We used to have uh, people which are very limited. Now the reach is very huge and not just from India, but across the globe. Uh, we have very large participation to these online programs. And uh, sometimes it is, it is multifold. Like uh, some of our programs have been attended by people, uh, more than 2,000 people. Uh, and that way, uh, if you say that we have learned a new, new way of reaching out the people in this uh, uh, pandemic situation, that all these events and exhibitions and other programs have been widely reached to the people. Uh, besides that, uh, we, we were having academic programs, which we have converted some of these programming online courses, like we have certificate course in uh, four areas and uh, all these certificate courses also have been converted into online mode. And, and the number of applicants are also multifold. So in this uh, pandemic situation, we can say some positive outcome. And that is that we, our institution have learned new ways of reaching out to the people and, and, and our staff and people who were not very much familiar with these new tools and technologies have been trained and doing very well in this. Every day we have another program. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, when I talk personally, uh, please change the next slide. Uh, when I talk about uh, uh, something uh, in, in terms of my personal contributions uh, during this COVID situation, with the help of certain librarians, because I have been very well connected with my library community, we started some uh, professional services like we created a virtual library information science service face group, Facebook group and all the links related to the various online resources, open access resources like India is having a lot of focus on uh, education, uh, open educational resources like audio, video and uh, different kind of uh, open access repositories. So for this particular Facebook group, we try to publicize that uh, material to uh, various part of the country, uh, also pro, uh, various kind of WhatsApp group, a lot of delivery of uh, free e-newspapers and other kind of documents. And that, that service was very popular and very helpful to those who are under closed down. Next slide, please. One more uh, uh, in terms of professional contribution uh, in Indian libraries uh, uh, things, I will tell you that every day in India there is a webinar or a kind of uh, a faculty development workshop or a kind of uh, uh, training program or orientation program. So uh, I think that is the best way libraries have utilized uh, knowledge sharing sessions. So knowledge share session, uh, they are all talking about uh, current pandemic situation. They are talking about a post COVID scenario also, but uh, still uh, uh, they are also sharing various kind of training materials and tools and technologies. So in that, that way I can, I, I can, I can uh, tell you that 
this particular situation librarians have taken in a very positive manner in a state of uh, isolation and these programs are having many advantages like many of these programs are available on youtube and also a large number of people are attending it so professionally library associations library community is is doing wonderful uh, work in in neutralizing this time and also training their users and providing them various kind of value additions and in in in, in this situation i think the best utilization of time and technology has been done next slide please now i will come to the state of uh, uh, libraries academic libraries uh, uh, how our uh, higher education institutions are prepared to engage uh, users in such a situation almost all universities colleges schools everything is closed even our exams have not been taken place for the final semester examination new admissions have not been started so in that kind of situation of uh, of uh, now there are a lot of state of uncertainties and in this state of uncertainties uh, there is a huge impact uh, on the libraries uh, because libraries are now supposed to serve the users uh, uh, in, in their lockdown to the faculty who are doing online class class teaching so what is happening like many of our libraries are not having those remote access technologies particularly school libraries uh, college libraries and the public libraries so they have limitation of reaching out to the people many of their digital resources cannot be reached to the people so that impact is quite huge in terms of reaching out and serving the people so this library close up is badly affecting libraries which are not well prepared in terms of various kind of facilities in terms of uh, discovery or remote access and many of the libraries uh because of internet bandwidth connectivity and also limitation of various kind of things are not able to uh, work remotely and many of them are still depend upon opening of the libraries definitely uh, in this new normal libraries are preparing themselves how to deal with uh, post covid scenario which is not looking very soon uh, currently with the kind of cases reported in india uh, they are preparing how to uh, reopen the libraries various kind of guidelines and uh, standing operating procedures are being prepared and apart from that there is a lot of discussion taken place that in post covid scenario how to enhance the digital access for the libraries how to create more institutional repository how to have more digital library network in terms of more uh, services and and how to enhance the open access to the resources so a lot of discussions are taking place in enhancing the a digital access so currently uh, i have uh, three important uh, things to say that yes we are under closed down uh, everybody is trying to learn new ways of dealing with this kind of situation this pandemic crisis people are learning technology people are creating new avenues new ways of dealing with the situation uh, definitely it is a kind of a very uh, scary situation or some kind of depressing environment for a long because closed down is almost more than 3 months so in in that kind of situation some some government institutions have been open some private establishment have start working but is still uh, when we talk about academic library all education institutions are closed but uh, like for examination system india uh, when the examination cannot take place what should be the new evaluation system to uh, award the degree and uh, uh, courses to the to the to the student to move out to the next class many of them have been promoted on the basis of assignment and other evaluation system but but still uh, there is a situation of uncertainties and and libraries uh, are trying to uh, match with the needs of the people and they are trying to fulfill the needs of the uh, 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 thank you next slide please so in in this this regard uh, uh, i will to india uh, is trying well and trying very hard in coming out of this pandemic situations an entire library community is trying to find out no new ways and means to deal with the situation to provide services and facility to the users so their education needs their research needs should not suffer and 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 this is a brief uh, information about how the situation in india is taking place thank you very much thank you ramesh so we are moving on to faus are you ready from 
How else are you here? Reggie, can you check? <clears throat> she is she is here. I uh, have it uh, um, allowed into the room. Um, do we I'm need not... to un do we need to uh, make him a co-host so he can unmute? Yeah, I'm sure that they will give me a chat. Let's let's move on. Let's uh, uh, move on to um, Nigeria. Okay, so we come back to follows later. Is yeah. that what we? And then let's okay. also uh, uh, skip. Uh, yeah. So is Saif here? Saif is oh. not here. So let's move on. Okay. Connectivity seems to be a problem. Huh. So uh, I know Adetan is here. Are you ready? Yes, I am ready. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Well, good day, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are. Um, nice to have you here on this presentation. Uh, as said, I'm Adetan Oyelude. I work in the Kenneth Dickey Library. University of Ibadan in Nigeria. I am uh, the head of the cataloging section of my library. Next slide, please. Yes, um, I'll be speaking on the COVID-19 pandemic experience in Nigeria from the perspective of my library and then um, the broader um, Nigerian situation. My library, Kenneth Dickey Library was established in 1948. So it is um, 72 years old this year, the oldest library in the country. Um, it consists of one main library. You can see the building, that's the frontage of the building right there in front. And we have 13 departmental libraries spread across campus and a medical library, which is uh, far away from the campus, like five kilometers away, where the University College Hospital is, UCH. That is the medical library serves the um, patrons of the medical school there. Now, um, with the pandemic coming up and increasing in March of this year, um, the lockdown had to be enforced. In actual fact, for me as a person, I went for a training program in Cape Town and I came back to Nigeria um, the weekend of the first week in March, which was about the third. And by the end of that week, the, the, the country was locked down. Nobody could come in or out. And so I just escaped having to be in Cape Town right now. <laughs> so um, as the pandemic, progress, we um, some guys return to work, senior civil servants around April to May, depending on um, the efforts or the ability to cope with the pandemic situation in the country. Um, the, the difference in what happened is such that just shortly before the shutdown, my library, the Kenneth DK Library was already running on some partial services because there was a strike action from the union, the Association of uh, Academics Unions. So um, academics were not on campus and the library was practically being um, manned by um, interns, library interns who came for practice as at that time. The library was still open, but had to be shut down completely halfway through March. And even till now, it is shut down. Only a few libraries across the country are opened, giving skeletal services. These university libraries are private universities that are um, running services online because there is still some teaching going on in the private ones. But the federal universities and the state universities um, are not 
functioning. Can I have the next slide, please? Next slide, thank you. Now, the lockdown activities. Um, in the initial stage, when everything was totally locked down, nobody could move or go anywhere, libraries and librarians had to do sensitization on what the COVID-19 is, how to cope with it using social media platforms. So we had messages from your friends, your colleagues, your librarians all over telling you on WhatsApp, on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, all of these social media um, platforms. We had um, messages going back and forth. Um, quite a panicky situation then. But um, institutionally, what we saw was that um, the provision of online resources through library websites and um, taking advantage of the offers of publishers, because then we had publishers uh, coming with uh, free online resources and you had something like um, Emerald Insight was going to open up and give you free services up until this particular time. I think it's the end of June or end of July as the case may be. And so libraries took advantage of these um, free services or um, reduced um, access permission services. Now, we also had librarians connecting and collaborating. More trainings online started um, emerging. We now had everybody moving on to online platforms. We now had Zoom presentations. We had um, calls from all over. And um, all those conferences that had been planned, most of them moved online. For example, uh, we have just, we are still actually in the middle of the LD4 2020, that is um, the linked, yes, linked online conference right now, online. And then even the students had to adjust. We had the library and information science students in Nigeria um, inviting their lecturers to give them trainings and uh, conferencing using their Skype, Zoom, or even Telegram, WhatsApp chats. Um, these we have all, all, all keyed into. The um, Nigerian Library Association and the African Library Association, AFLIA, also have been doing a lot during this lockdown situation, um, having trainings for the Wikidata, Wikipedia, all sorts of activities have been going on. And um, therefore, as at now, we have a situation where even though, yes, we were locked down and uh, feeling, you know, isolated like this baby right here in the middle of a, <laughs> a patch of uh, vegetables like there, yes, it's quite strange what we are experiencing. But we find out that we have had to adjust to all these situations. And um, even though we have our libraries almost totally locked down, nothing going on there, but the activities are going on online and we are struggling to cope with the isolation. Just um, two weeks ago, one of the libraries in Nigeria, the University of Lagos Library, got a donation of robots. And these robots are going to be employed in checking people as they come in, their temperature going to be used to attend to users for reference and circulation services so that social distancing is maintained and the staff can be protected. So I'll go on to the next slide, please. Next slide, please. Thank you. So now we have the uh, after effects going forward, the after effects of the lockdown. As I said before, the lockdown has been eased up a bit or have a little bit of an ease down, even though there are coffee, we still have coffee from between 10 p.m. daily to 4 a.m. in the morning. Um, some, I mean, interstate travel is now allowed, but the coffee has to be maintained from 10 to 4 a.m. Um, it's unfortunate that with all the precautions being taken, the increase in um, 
detection of those who have the COVID-19 still goes on. Um, even just today, the statistics are like, um, we have 37,801 confirmed cases. Uh, about half of those have recovered, like 15,677 have recovered. The deaths in Nigeria is about 805 have died. Um, new cases are coming up, but we are trying to ensure that um, we keep these down by making sure that all the protocols are observed. Nobody can enter um, my university campus without having a face mask on. All those are checked right from the gate. Um, all the portals have been provided with places where people can wash their hands, do the sanitation, and I um, mean, sorry, use hand sanitizers just to make sure that they prevent and um, maintain social distance. Um, well, we are not sure what will happen with the um, taking of loans, returning of books, physical handling of books as yet, because we have not resumed. Um, not being sure when even uh, universities in, you know, um, tertiary institutions generally have not resumed. But um, in my state, the Oyo state, we have the secondary school students in their final year. The junior secondary school students in their final year are going to school for classes. We also have the um, primary school students in their final year going to school. Probably we could call them maybe a test case or what will happen. We are hoping for the best and we um, really look forward to coming back and um, adjusting to the new normal that uh, we find out that we have to cope with. Um, can I have the last slide, please? Yes. So in terms of providing resources, supporting our educational institutions in Nigeria, I can say sincerely that um, most of it is happening online, but some librarians you know, took it upon themselves to go all out, especially at the beginning of the serious lockdown. Some librarians in a particular state, the Akwa Ibom state, went in collaboration with a non-governmental organization to go around the villages in the community. I think that is worth mentioning because they went to educate the people on how to proceed and protect themselves from getting, um, from contracting the COVID-19. So um, the after effects, the lessons we have learned are that libraries should be prepared always for disasters. Not only disasters now, pandemics. Yes, we have learned that we are not well equipped to cope with pandemic situations, and therefore we have to broaden our skill sets. Academic librarians particularly need to be extra multi-skilled to perform well and function in all situations. Because as it is, um, all of us will now have to learn how to make use of um, um, thermometers and um, do lots of checkings that we normally would not do um, in the course of our duties in the old normal. Librarianship is actually being redefined by the COVID-19 pandemic. And just like a colleague of mine had said in her presentation last week, the question we should ask ourselves are you a librarian when your library is locked down? Are you actually a librarian when your library is locked down? In other words, are your services, are they bound to the four walls of the building? Are they bound to the services you are used to? And even though um, it's seemingly like we have a coming at a snail's speed, in Nigeria towards um, moving ahead, I think we are all poised for coming out very strong like a white rose. Thank you.
Thank you very much. Um, we don't have even 10 minutes left. So Mimi, I will last but not least, uh, I'll move to you. Okay, uh, very good. I will, uh, and, and I only have a few slides um, so I will will go quickly. I, you know, we've talked about some of these presentations being at a high level and uh, at, at a national level. Uh, mine is definitely organizationally oriented, but what I have tried to do here is uh, is pull out some lessons that I think are uh, universally applicable uh, and and really some of the high level learnings that we've taken out of the of the program so far. So um, yeah, if you can move to the first slide, that'd be, that'd be great. This was a slide I, I actually put together for a different presentation, but uh, is just sort of showing the, the speed with which we went through the closure process. We went from you know, late February, sort of seeing some challenges with COVID to March 15th, we were closing our library buildings. So, so there was on the one hand, a really rapid uh, closure process that we had to respond to. Um, on the other hand, you know, we've talked about the fact that we were, that you know, many of the libraries are never really closed. Certainly our library was, was never truly closed because uh, we very quickly moved a lot of our, um, We've always had a lot of virtual services or for, for many years have had a lot of virtual services and have been slowly increasing the services that we provide remotely anyway. Uh, so this, uh, although this very quick change and, uh, and you know, there was a lot of discussion that had to happen in the course of these couple of weeks where we shut down our physical libraries, um, it, was, it, it was never a closure. The libraries were, were certainly never fully closed. And um, uh, I was interested to hear that discussion that you were having with your, with your group about you know, whether you're a librarian when your libraries are physically closed. Certainly my answer would be yes, yes, you absolutely are. And you know, we were seeing more and more examples of libraries being virtual. The, the library is so, so much of the libraries goes on beyond the the walls of the building. So if you could have the next slide. I've just kind of pulled out key actions and key responses in in two areas. Uh, the the building shut down itself and where we had some and some of the lessons coming out of that quick response and then my my next slide is some of the bigger picture adjusting key actions around adjusting to the new normals. Um, I, I, back at the beginning of this call, Golson talked about the work dividing the dividing the staff into teams so you could minimize exposure. We did that quickly during the shutdown as well, and it was it has been helpful as an organizing principle. So um, so we had staff starting to work remotely. We implemented a two weeks on, two weeks split our teams in half split our library staff in half and, and implemented a two weeks on, two weeks off rotation. Um, there's, there were always challenges with that, but it was a, was a great way to ensure that we had backup staff uh, uh, and we're, we weren't having too much exposure for folks. In the end, we didn't really have a problem with, with outages, but, but we still feel that that's important and is something we're going to continue go, doing uh, going forward. That also meant that we started early on cross training and cross training is something that is continuing as we as we move into thinking about long term we need our staff to be very flexible and be able to step in and cover for one another in in various places and uh, uh, various uh, in various roles uh, so we we need to build in that flexibility um, the equipment piece was the most interesting piece when in the in the rapid shutdown um, we were surprised how quickly we were able to move to having folks work remotely so um, one of our big discoveries was, was that these days uh, desktop computers are small enough that people could just take them home uh, we we sent especially when even when we were looking at having people work two weeks on two weeks off 
we could tell people, you, you know, we know you're going to be home for two weeks, just take that desktop computer with you. So one of the challenges we've had in the past is thinking about how we convert everyone to laptops and, and how we uh, how we manage systems, you know, the, the, and what kind of investment we have to make in, um, in computer equipment. Um, that actually, it was surprising how quickly we were able to resolve the, the issue of, um, of computer equipment and, um, and ensuring people that had, people had the capacity to work from home. We did have to work to make sure staff had connectivity when they were working remotely. Um, we are fortunate to be in Silicon Valley and, and, and it wasn't a problem for most of our staff, but we definitely had some issues there. Um, so we had to invest in, con in connectivity. We had to invest in ensuring that people had the kinds of ergonomic support that they needed to work from home. Um, you know, when we, one of the continuing issues and concerns particularly tied to the pandemic is, is what it means for suddenly everybody to be working from home. Uh, you know, my husband is, is wandering around the, the, our apartment right now and getting ready to, to be at work himself. Um, and so we've had challenges navigating uh, how we have suddenly have two of us working from home in the same space that has gone on th with many of our staff. Um, the, the challenge of many schools being closed and schools being uh, providing remote teaching where they, are, where they are open has been a challenge for a lot of our staff and one that we are going to be dealing with at least in the, in the near term it, it, uh, within in California, very few schools are going to be opening physically in uh, in the fall. So uh, we've had to develop systems to manage where our staff need the flexibility to um, to be supportive of their of their children, and um, so that has been an, an, an interesting challenge. So it, and it's and it's certainly been something where we need to invest. Um, the biggest thing that uh, has come out of this, and this isn't. Uh, this is not a surprise, but it never, but it always bears uh, emphasizing is that you really can't communicate too much. I think one of the best things that we did when we moved into the uh, shutdown phase that was that we implemented a weekly call with between a weekly all hands call for our library staff. Um, and having that, you know, we just, we've always done quarterly all hands calls, um, we really needed that much more frequent opportunity for discussions. And so we're still running our uh, regular staff newsletter. Um, we have we have a Slack channels. We certainly have plenty of channels for communication, um, but that weekly all hands call has been, has been really helpful and has allowed us to deal with uh, a lot of issues. In, in, at the beginning, it was very important for dealing with issues related to the pandemic. Um, it has helped us as we have tried to navigate the challenges of uh, dealing with the with library policies as opposed to uh, university level policies and how we integrate what the university is doing with what we're doing at the library level. I think one of the things that uh, uh, don't go back, but one of the things on that on that initial slide was I was trying to track the decisions that the university was making against the decisions that the library were making and 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 looking at the challenges that we were facing and, and staying in step um, with what was going on. And, and all of that is coordinated again with decisions that the uh, local authorities are making, right? We're dealing with count counties that were doing shutdowns of things like schools. So if we could go to the, to the last slide. Great. So, uh, so we're moving to a, uh, Building restart, and, and I, I do want to, I called it restart there, but it really is building restart. Uh, you know, like I said, we've, we've never shut down and we've certainly morphed some of our services. Um, and as we're thinking about the new normal, that is that, is that morphing of services that, that we're talking about. Um, one of the uh, good lessons that has come out of this is, especially for academic and, Academic and research libraries as a group are laboratories and, and we should treat it like one. Uh, we've, it's a, a little bit of a truism on campus that we talk about the library as the laboratory for the humanities. Um, and, and we really do need to continue to think about libraries that way. That has made a difference on campus because 
it's certainly on our campus, and I believe this is true, at least other places in the States, there's a research restart program, which is separate from the teaching restart program. And, uh, and while we have certainly not abandoned our focus on teaching, learning, and research, and that is becoming more and more of an issue as we move into fall, being integrated with the research restart has been really important for us. Um, we have, um, because we are part of, because we are considered a lab, the, and because labs have begun reopening in a, in a very limited way, so the library has begun reopening in a very limited way. So what we are doing on campus is, uh, is access to the library by appointment. Um, and we've, we've developed really pretty quickly a system where we can, uh, we can uh, make appointments where, where, you know, we've limited entry to the library. We've got a process by which uh, we're integrating with the campus system for tracking health. The, the, the campus has a, a tool that they're calling health check that anybody who is coming to campus is supposed to be completing and we can check to make sure that people have completed their health check work. Um, so there's, there's a lot to think about in, in reopening the library and, you know, a lot of the, the lessons that my colleagues have talked about as we've, uh, we've worked through these presentations today uh, certainly ring true. We are uh, moving, we are moving to digital exhibitions, we are moving to digital training, uh, we have remote reference services, we've, we've pushed a lot of that to be remote. Um, we've had to think hard about um, investments in collections and how we are spending our collection dollars. And uh, actually that's a place where teaching is becoming more of an issue. Um, places where we have not traditionally, um, we're looking hard at, at where we're spending our money in terms of building a research collection versus building a collection that supports remote teaching and learning. Um, and we've had to make some investments in uh, in new kinds of databases and kinds of data services, and in some cases invest in digital versions of collections that we already hold in print um, so that we can support people working remotely. Um, that's where you get down to the question of general counsel being your friend. We have worked to expand digitization. Uh, this has required us to do risk assessment and, and really look hard at how we are interpreting the, some of the US copyright laws and understanding uh, what we need to do and where, where our risk profile is. Uh, we are, one of the things that we have been engaged with and involved with is moving to controlled digital lending, which is, or, or a, a version of controlled digital lending. There's, there's it, the controlled digital lending concept is, um, uh, has a couple of different definitions depending on uh, depending on where you look at it, but it is it's clearly going to be important, especially uh, Golson also at the very beginning mentioned HathiTrust. HathiTrust's system, which they are explicit about, is is not controlled digital lending, but is a, a digital access system, uh, has been invaluable as we have uh, have moved to support. Uh, we've tried to do things like course reserves and have been moving to support teaching. Um, so so mirroring that system and developing something where developing a system by which we can provide digital access for uh, materials that are. Uh, that are we own physically is is going to be critical. Uh, so what Stanford is doing is inviting only a portion of the uh, of students back to campus in the fall. It will be the freshman and sophomore classes that can that have the opportunity to come to campus in the fall, and the juniors and seniors will have the opportunity to come to class in the winter quarter, winter and spring quarters. So in any quarter, there is always going to be some percentage of our students who are working remotely. So we, th which means for us that we really need all of our resources to be accessible remotely. And that's where we start getting into um, looking at some of these, uh, these digital services. So uh, where we're starting, where we're seeing change is that push. Uh, we're, uh, you know, we're having, we know that this shift to the emphasis on digital is is not going to change. And really, as we're talking about a new normal, that is something that we're, we are going to see. Um, at the same time, because we are open at some, you know, open by appointment, we know that there is 
continued interest in the library as a physical space in uh, in use of our buildings. Uh, we're also in the process of uh, uh, planning for renovations of one floor of our library, and that has continued to be an area of interest and concern uh, for for all of our users. So, so we know that the physical building is not going away, but this, this change of emphasis has been an important one. Um, I'm just going to stop there because I know we are running out of time and we did want time for, for discussion. Uh, yeah, thank you, Mimi. So uh, we are at a dilemma. We have still 142 attendees online and we used up one and a half hours our presentation time. Mm -hmm. But I do have Faouz here who is from Lebanon. So mm -hmm. what I would suggest is because Faouz, you have no uh, PPT anyway, and the Lebanon uh, perspective is important. So what I'm going to ask is yeah, if those of you who can stay uh, can uh, finish listening, and how do you feel about that, Reggie? Yeah. Yes, no, I think we should go ahead and and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think so. Okay, okay. Go ahead, fellas. I will find your slide. Sorry, this is the quickest way to get back. Here you are. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, first, uh, thank you very much, and sorry for. Uh, uh, because the uh, electricity shut down, so I, uh, you know, like, and the generator, it took, you know, like, a few seconds. That's why I lost the connection. Uh, so uh, what I'm going to talk about today, really, about our experience in Lebanon, but uh, just I want to also uh, say that, uh, you know, we closed, the, we shut down the country in March 18 until uh, July 1st. So the reopening the library is uh, just recently and only a fortunate uh, library that uh, they start to really reopen the library. Uh, from the pre previous uh, presentation, you know, I can say that uh, the crisis of Corona really, or COVID-19, uh, imposed difficult and different choices and unprecedented challenges that led to catastrophic cons consequences for all sectors in the world, not only the library sector and then the information services sector, and most country where there is, uh, you know, like uh, coronavirus, uh, most of the library really closed or, you know, was shut down. So now we have in Lebanon, I want to talk about two kinds of uh, uh, libraries or co two categories. Libraries, not just in Lebanon, and also in, in the area or in the world as well, most library of all kinds and country that invested in information technology and means of communication and skills for workers have been able to move quickly and expand the provision of various services via the internet during the presence of citizens on home. So those fortunate libraries in Lebanon and over the world envision, envision several phases with different measures of all, uh, offering limited services or more than that on site as follow, for instance, I just go through some of them because I know many uh, the presentation, I don't want to repeat many of it, but just I will go through a part of it. For example, pre-closure, you, know, uh, you know, measures, that there is our awareness session on COVID for all the staff of the library. There is automatic uh, renewal for all the books, uh, you know, like uh, 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 waived all the overdue fees, deactivated the hold of book services. About the closures measure, you know, like there's few circulation now recently because we opened reopened the library, a few libraries we opened, uh, uh, circulation staff and uh, reference uh, uh, staff reporting to work while taking safety measure, scanning articles and chapters of books, you know, borrowing and returning books, implementing uh, quantitative policies on return books, and uh, most important, community communicating all the new rules to our user, user through the uh, website or uh, the all social media to update them all uh, uh, and uh, all the research guide for about the COVID. 
we have virtual services, uh, chatting and all this, you know, like uh, online individual, you know, using uh, uh, consultation Skype or Google Hangout, or office call diverted to cell phones, for example, and the library on only for material that can, you know, like uh, deliver it uh, electronically. This is what reopening library measures where to start. First of all, we have pandemic disaster planning committee and then the most important division to prepare a clear vision, strategic planning, open, open faces, assessment plan, safety guidelines, and then the most important communications plan. With the space, we open all public area, not, you know, like at uh, once, closing room, not attended by staff, put, you know, signs for uh, the social distance and the circulation and then uh, uh, at the reference uh, and then redesign uh, the whole seat and roof, uh, roof, remove furniture, you know, like in the reading area and the computer ramp to promote physical distancing. Access to stack is very limited only to faculty and maybe to graduate student, and sometimes no one, depends on the situation. Limiting the number of students, you know, like uh, using the facility, uh, like about 50% of the user, and then they, they, they need uh, to do a reservation, you know, like to, to get a seat in the library. Uh, and then uh, there is the limiting time as well in the library, uh, the most two hours that they can use it. And then uh, some libraries, you know, like uh, shut down the WhatsApp so the student can concentrate only on the work and not to do any social, uh, you know, like, uh, you know. The resources, developing electronic collection, uh, more library, you know, like have, uh, you know, like uh, preparing uh, electronic and digitization, Lobby lobbying for open access, definitely we're going to do that, you know, like uh, in the future archive digitization efforts, and then uh, uh, about copyright librarians should lobby for more flexible copyright laws. This is very important. The services I mentioned before, self-services, virtual reference and online instruction were provided to many users and then lending ebooks as well we should pushing uh, vendors to align lending their collection uh, when negotiating uh, negotiating for new contracts uh, uh, redesign the library in more flexible manner you know to do it and continuous learning and developing to be able to assist the community learning about new technologies this is about the fortunate uh, library that you know like the reopen recently however for those library and you know like uh, who did not invest such in many Arab countries and including Lebanon. The impact of the uh, pandemic on the information society and library was significantly painful. And the provision of remote services and distant education becomes random one and going to list you know, the, the disadvantage of it. Library and institutions really are not well equipped with information technology and means of communication. That's one of the reasons that they cannot offer services online. The infrastructure is either absent or weak. Most of the teaching staff, this is, you know, it was surprise and staff and students are unfamiliar with the techniques and skills on how to retrieve digital information. The education and curriculum in many schools and universities is not suitable for distance learning. Uh, and the whole society anyway, the society in general, you know, like uh, it's not really uh, familiar with information awarenesses and uh, modern technique to retrieve information for the, uh, the internet. In rural area, we have problem and, you know, like networking absent, very poor, you know, electric, like now, yeah, electrical power cut uh, is continuous. Like now, I mean, uh, you know, like recently just happened to me. Most schools and universities in Lebanon do not have effective library or libraries are absent, except for few private schools and universities that, that have been established by, by foreign ministries have modern library, high technology, and high skilled professionals like the American University of Beirut, like Lebanese American University, like the uh, French uh, universities in Lebanon, and so on. You know, there are uh, many, uh, uh, you know, like, you know, university built by missionaries. And Arabic online databases are rare or absent somehow. Where there's no information, if this basic, if we don't have this, and important element are not available, well established, established library and information institution exists in Lebanon and in the Arab world. However, they operate independently, not within an integrated information society. And this is the dangerous of it. 
Also, decision uh, makers supposed to consider the requirement of the information society, starting from building an infrastructure on all parts of the country to develop capabilities and skill in all sectors, changing behavior and ensuring transparency and accountability through freedom of access of information. And if I worked a lot about that and monitoring accountability, uh, accountability in society because uh, ruined by corruption. Therefore, the corona pandemic has a major impact on providing reference services and creating new jobs. This impact was also reflected in the design of the library in the future and the development of the library collection, and most of which will be digitized. In addition, library have begun to review their strategy of all over. And even if they send us, you know, like for the uh, president of uh, the association to also review the old uh, or the, uh, what they call it, the strategy that they have it between the 219 to the 224 to fit this new, uh, you know, uh, but then, uh, you know, the, the corona. Uh, so a plan, uh, a fundamental, fundamental change to serve the public in the face of these challenges. Library have to move their services to the virtual space and explore new ways to serve the public. As a result from this, the, ro the role of library is very important, especially public libraries, which play a major role in the country's recovery, life in general, and the formation of a good citizen. Uh, and then my final word that Really, I cannot judge what's going on in the MENA section, especially in the Arab world, because if you know all of them that most of the country is unstable, or they have instability and in political instability, or they have war. So that's another reason that they have this kind of problem. And thank you very much for your presentation and for listening to me. Thank you, Faz. So I'm going to stop sharing uh, so you can see all of the particip participants and I can see you. Thank you all the speakers and thank you for the audience. And we still have uh, more than 100, uh, 135 people here and I see more people joining us. So what we are going to do is for those of you who can stay because we took longer and we have all these technology challenges, including my, for those of you who can stay, our IT person, Sean, will open the chat so you can type your questions in the chat space. In the middle, I already saw some of them that were uh, uh, typed to me. And um, in the meanwhile, as the audience, we really would like to hear from you either questions or uh, the way you experience and you provide service, if you could do that in the chat room. Jim, but let me- uh, I have, uh, Jim, I have a uh, request. Actually, yeah. I have to attend a, uh, IFLA Cultural Heritage Program Advisory Committee meeting after 10 minutes. Okay. Uh, because it was already scheduled. So if any questions, uh, because I can be there for another uh, 10 minutes. So if, if any question related to me, if you can prioritize that, otherwise after 10 minutes, I will be uh, uh, quitting the meeting. Okay, Ramesh, it sounds good. So the chat is open. Actually, Reggie, if you could uh, uh, do with me, I will try to see who has any questions to Ramesh. We actually have a hard stop at uh, in 10 minutes of my time because that's when our session ends. So right now I saw, uh, thank you uh, to Ifla for the wonderful presentation. And um, I think this is our endeavor trying to get so many people who try to present at midnight in Australia in winter or Mimi early morning in California and in Germany, in India and so on. So I have so, asked. So Shin, uh, I see there's a, a question about how uh, library leaders coordinate with lower level staff in making safety decisions. Um, and I will just respond to that to say that has been, uh, I talked about the fact that we opened that uh, weekly all hands uh, Zoom call. Uh, that one of the real advantages to having that is that it has been a forum for staff across the organization to raise control concerns about uh, what we've been doing in terms of safety. 
Um, it's also been an opportunity for us to communicate out. We had, uh, a, you know, right before we opened our libraries by appointment, we had someone from the university's environmental health and safety team that had done a lot of the um, had done a lot of the reviews and it helped us with things like signage uh, and, you know, setting up one way systems and, and taping off. We, we had removed a lot of chairs. We had taped off certain areas and where we, we, we weren't allowing seating. Um, so we were able to bring them in and, and let all of our staff talk with, uh, talk with those folks and ask questions about how we were going forward. Um, Ultimately, a lot of our decisions are driven from sort of somewhere above. We are we are complying with state and county uh, requirements around opening and, uh, and and management. So, so a lot of our decisions are not necessarily being made at the local level, but uh, but having that room that space for there to be uh, questions and open discussions has has been very important for us. Okay. Can I just okay. can I just come in? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, as I said in my presentation, one of the findings of these surveys is that people felt there was less hierarchy in interacting with all levels of staff in the universities, both in Singapore and Australia. People were made to feel that uh, they, everybody is accessible. And that was, as Mimi said, you cannot communicate enough. There is uh, weekly, uh, all of staff meetings. In fact, some of, some, some of them were doing these as social gatherings, like virtual morning teas, afternoon teas, virtual cocktail hours, and that sort of thing. So people felt that they were being uh, more included, inclusive in the whole process. And I'm hearing a lot of uh, positive vibes about that. Um, on the question of the sanitizing, and I know in Singapore and in Australia, there's a huge amount of sanitizing and cleaning going on. In fact, it's a huge expense. And, and again, uh, the university directs those decisions and the planning. Uh, Gulchin, while you're on that point, there was a question about um, do we sanitize every seat and every carol immediately after use? How does sanitizing process take place? Well, in Singapore, it was done as, as, as a program. For example, certain parts of the um, uh, library seats were not accessible. They were completely um, uh, out of bounds and then cleaners were employed to, to do everything. Yes, you would never allow people to reuse the seats and the tables. You're right. So I specifically asked whether anybody has questions uh, for Ramesh because you need to go and I have not seen any. There were quite a lot of uh, thank yous, but also questions about whether the recording and the slides will be made available. And uh, we will make the recordings available. And um, uh, uh, Gaushan, did we make the presentation separately available in the past? Um, Sorry, uh, I didn't. We will, we will make the presentations available, yeah. Mm -hmm. So this, because we had technical uh, uh, problems playing the YouTube, we will also make Berto's pre-recorded uh, YouTube from Denmark available on our, uh, on the link that I shared in the first um, screen. Hmm. Um, there is the question from Melina. You want to go through that, uh, Jen? Go ahead, uh, Reggie, because I have also many people writing to me privately. <laughs> so it varies <laughs> in the sea of, <laughs> Melina writes from, from Brazil writes, I'm in the process of reopening my library and afraid of cross contamination of our users. My director suggested we do a, a folder with advices and put in every book picked up by a user. I really don't know how and what to abort uh, in this uh, folder. Do you have any suggestions? 
Maybe I could comment on that, apart from what we do here at the French National Library. Uh, IFLA has put up a, a very big uh, set of content of all the recommendations that are valid across the world in terms of how long do you keep your documents under quarantine and so on. So if you go to the uh, landing page of the IFLA website, and, and we'll be actually translating that in uh, several languages, you will get a lot of information and tips on what can what kind of rules could apply and also you will see that uh, depending on the country there are a number of uh, recommendations uh, arising generally from the national uh, library associations thank you so we are three minutes away from the reserved Zoom room on the IFLAS website. So I'm afraid that we are not going to be able to answer all of the questions. Thank you all uh, speakers for the wonderful presentation from around the world, especially those of you who stay up at odd hours. Thank you, uh, the audience for sending us the questions and so on. So what I have done is I have saved the chat so I'm going to send the, the saved chat to the committee members. So if there are anything that we could do in the future webinar series or in our events, we will uh, consider how to address them. But for now, let me, on behalf of the standing committee, uh, thank you. Uh, can I make a comment, please, ma'am, before you yeah. close? Um, yeah. maybe, maybe we can invite colleagues who are still um, on this, um, if they have a written submission to make, we're more than welcome to we'll welcome their submissions. We will, and we will share that. Uh, submission about, uh, in the chat. A written submission about their uh, country, or their dealing with the COVID-19 uh, services. Submitting to the uh, committee via our yeah. website, right? Yeah, that's a very good idea. So thank you again, and I'm going to end. You heard my colleague Reggie just said, we really regret that we didn't have enough time to hear your experience. Can, and I, these can are, I just say, sorry. Yeah, uh, you know, L Lorraine is coordinating the Hot Topics session virtually mm -hmm. in August, or, and it will be a follow-up to this session. So we can actually use the questions in Lorraine's session, in the Hot Topic session. Absolutely. Thank you all. So with this, I will say goodbye from America. Thank you. Thank you very, thank you very much. Bye. Bye, Thank colleague. you very much. Thank bye, you. Bye, colleagues. Thank, thank you, you. Reggie. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. It was a great presentation. Bye. Great, great, great. Bye. 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 bye.